I'm going to use geometry expressions to uh, look at a cubic spline, otherwise called a Bezier spline. I'm going to use the de Castle's construction of one of these splines, and I'm drawing it here, um, starting with the control polygon A, B, C. I'm going to create another line from AB to BC and one from uh, BC to CD and I'm going to create another line here and I'm going to create a point on that last line and now I'm going to start doing some constraining I'm going to constrain point E to lie proportion T along the line AB. I'm going to constrain F to be proportion T along BC. And I'm going to constrain G to be proportion T along CD. I'm going to constrain H to be proportion T along EF and I to be proportion T along FG and finally J to be proportion T along HI. Now I can see as I as I well first of all I'm going to um, specify the constraint the location of A to be X not Y not. I'm going to constrain the location of B to be X1 Y1 because I don't want these things to move. I want C to be constrained to be X2 Y2 and D to be constrained to be X3 Y3. Now as I drag I can see that the T moves and if I create a locus, I want to create a locus of this point J. I'll create a locus as T varies from 0 to 1. And here I get my, my curve. Uh, let's make it a pretty color. And so we see as we drag along the curve, we get, uh, as we drag, we, uh, we see the J follows the curve. If we drag the different points in the control polygon, we see that we get different varieties of the curve of the spline. The spline kind of follows the control polygon. And if we select the curve itself, we can ask geometry expressions to compute the parametric equation. And here is the parametric equation of the cubic spline. And we see it is a parametric cubic. That means it's a cubic in T uh, whose parameters are the X and Y values of the control points A, B, C and D.